Hi there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Vera and in today's video I am setting up a brand new bullet journal for 2023. If you're watching this video at the end of 2022, I hope the end of the year is treating you well and if you're watching at the beginning of 2023, happy new year. So excited to get started in this bullet journal because it is my favorite one yet. The journal I'm using for 2023 is this bright yellow Archer and Olive A5 journal from one of the subscription boxes. This journal was kindly gifted to me by my beautiful pen pal Alex. I've mentioned Alex in my pen pal video and I'll keep mentioning her because this journal is still the most thoughtful gift I've received in a long time and it serves as a reminder that being an active listener is super important so thank you for that life lesson Alex. This beautiful yellow journal also comes with a pink border which is such a cute detail. Yellow is also my favorite color so I couldn't think of a better journal to start 2023. In today's video I'll be showcasing most of my yearly spreads so this video will probably be one of the longest on my channel and I hope you enjoy. Feel free to skip ahead to the spreads you find more interesting and if you have any questions let me know down in the comments. As always my first spread is my cover page. Now for the last few journals I've stuck with a consistent theme of blue and green watercolors. I'm not sure why but I feel like it's a very mentally clarifying theme and mental clarification is a topic I'll be talking a lot about in this video. To start the cover page I used this font from Pinterest to draw out the numbers 2023. I counted the grid to make sure they fell in the middle of my page and this year I'm going for rounded leaves that'll fill the page. It's very reminiscent of my 2022 bullet journal because it's the same colors but the leaves are slightly different and if you're curious you can watch my 2022 bullet journal plan with me right over here. Anyway for this theme after drawing my numbers I'm painting on stems so that my leaves can lead off of them. Now in hindsight I shouldn't have put so many stems I'd have liked them longer because they're much more mind settling than multiple stems. I will show you what I mean as the video goes along. Now after painting out a couple of these stems I'm going going to be putting masking glue on all of the numbers so that I don't have to worry about painting over them and making it look weird. Now you could just use the watercolor over the numbers and then use a white paint to cover the numbers later on which is technically what I do later but I never use my masking glue so I figured it would be a great time to use it and to see if it works out for me. You should technically wait till the glue dries before starting to paint over the top of it because otherwise you'll mix your watercolor with the glue which is not what you want to do but I was impatient so I decided to paint paint around it for the meantime and I crossed my fingers so that I wouldn't put my hand in the glue. I definitely failed at this so if you are thinking of doing the same thing just wait for the glue to dry. Now of course we get to the fun part which is the leaves. The leaves are teardrop shaped and the thin part of the teardrop connects to the stem. When painting I like to listen to nothing and instead focus on filling the page with leaves. There's no perfect shape I'm going for and instead I'm letting my mind go and letting the paintbrush glide over the page. I find this to be extremely therapeutic. It forces me me to slow down and in this clip you can see how long it actually takes me to paint a single leaf. 14 seconds for this one. So while I do speed up all of my clips this is what it usually looks like and just for the record all of the painting that I'm doing for this new bullet journal took me around 10 hours to do. I was aiming for something that was very relaxing to do. Now of course 10 hours for anyone else might seem excessive but painting is my emotive outlet and when I'm painting a pattern I feel like I could recollect my thoughts and lay myself bare on a page. It's a very vulnerable experience in my opinion and I highly recommend you give it a try but of course you don't need to put that much effort in. You could really just paint a couple of branches and be done with it. But if you are feeling a little anxious and you think painting could be a helpful tool, then definitely give it a go. My goal while painting is to try to not have the leaves touch each other, but to be close enough together that there is minimal white space. All leaves start off quite different to each other, but as time goes on, my technique starts to blend in a flow and the leaves start to gain a similar shape. The best thing about this piece is that it may have odd bits up close, but when you look at the entire painting as a whole, it's very beautiful. To me, this represents us as humans. We tend to focus on such small imperfections but when you look at a person as a whole all of their imperfections are what make them beautiful. Once I've painted away from the borders of the page it's time to tackle the borders. For the borders this is where I just add parts of the leaves where I imagined they'd end just to give that page the never-ending effect. Anyway as for the stems I'm going to continue adding new ones when I have too much white space and I'm going to continue filling my page with these leaves so enjoy some fun time lapses and jump cuts. As 
we get to the end of this one, it is now time to remove the glue. I'm just going to use a pair of tweezers for this and technically there's probably better tweezers or there's a better way to do this, but this was the technique that worked for me. Now I did ask my friends on Instagram what they thought, if I should have just left it blank, colored it in or not. And I got votes for silver. I got votes for outlining it in blue and some other fun suggestions, for example, the color yellow. But ultimately I decided to just fill it in with white gouache because I figured it would give it a more bright white effect. And I'm happy with the subtle effect that it has. I don't want it to be too bold. I do want the focus to be on the leaves. I think that I achieved it and I'm very happy with the look. Now, here's a close up with the white paint, just putting it on. And I did hesitate for a split second and I tried to put on some water watercolor over the top of the white paint to see if it would look good but when I held it up to the sun it kind of had like the wrong shimmer to it it was more of a pinky yellow and I wanted it to be more of a bluey pinky color so I just went back over with white paint Anyway, this is what the cover page looks like. I'm very, very happy with it. The next page that I'm doing is my grid spacing cheat sheet. I do this every single year, but in a recent video of mine or in a couple of videos ago, I did mention that I thought that a grid spacing cheat sheet was not necessarily very helpful to me anymore, but I continue doing it just in case. Someone did mention that there's this technique of doing a kind of ruler as a grid spacing cheat sheet. And I think that's such a cool idea. I'll link that video up over here if I find it. I like that idea to be able Able to move the bookmark but at the moment I feel like I'm going to be moving around quite a lot so having a separate piece of paper is just not very practical although technically I do have the back of the journal with a pocket so I could also do that but anyway it's not that important. To start off with, I'm just going to number out the different rows and columns on the page. And then I'm going to do some different dividing lines. So I'm going to divide my page in two, divide my page in three, four and five across and vertically, just so that I have some ideas because this is generally the kind of layout that I would look for when I'm building a spread from scratch. Once I put everything down, you can see that the numbers on the top or on the side are for the number of boxes that I I would be splitting my page into and then across is how many boxes or how many grids I need to achieve said boxes. I'm going to add on now my leaves and it's a slow process to add these and I'm just going to draw it on the bottom corner of that page and if you follow my train of thought you'll be like oh well why didn't you continue on to the other page? Well you would be right because I will be. The other page in question is my bullet page. Here I list out all of the bullets that I'll be using during the year. I have six regular ones and therefore tasks, events, notes, completed, migrated and cancelled tasks. I'm using the same font again to write each letter out. Then I'm going to use some washi tape to outline a box around the bullets so that my painting doesn't cover them. I also flip through to the front of my journal just to write Vero Bujo at the front because I also forgot to do that at the beginning of the video. As much as I love Vero Bujo because I've had that Instagram handle for such a long time, I have been contemplating whether or not I should change it. If you have any ideas, let me know down in the comments below. But otherwise I'll probably end up sticking with Vero Bujo because it is symbolic. Anyway, to continue on, I'm going to add in some more leaves on this page and I'm just going to fill it up. I absolutely love painting these. It's so relaxing. And honestly, if you feel like you have not a single creative bone in your body, just try this out because you only need some cheap watercolors. If you're in Australia, all of the Eckersley stores have very cheap watercolors. That's actually the ones that I'm using right now, just to continue with that same color palette. You can just use a rounded brush because those ones when they're wet end in a nice point and you can get a really nice effect. Also, because I'm filming, I don't turn my page in a certain way. So that's why some of my leaves look very different to others and it takes me longer to paint them. But if you do have the patience, you can turn your page around so that you're not overlapping leaves and so you're not struggling when you're painting them. And I think that would be even more relaxing than what I'm doing. By the way, this clip is my normal pace. It's very, very slow as you can see, but let's get on to something a bit more fast now. As I mentioned earlier, I wanted to try out both techniques of either using the masking glue and then taking it out and painting over it. And this time I'm just going to leave it. I have the pencil marks where I'm going to 
paint the word key. And I'm going to see if it works this way. It does work this way, as you can see. I'm just putting down some white gouache paint on the pencil markings just to write the word key. I would say the only difference is that sometimes because this particular gouache that I'm using has been dried out before, so it's quite watered down, is that it's not very opaque, which means that you can sort of see a glimpse of the watercolor underneath, but give it another layer and you'll be totally fine. So I reckon if you don't have the masking glue, this is the best technique for you and no stress. Finally, this is what the key page and the grid spacing cheat sheet looks like together. I think it's very effective to have that kind of branching off onto the side. And now we are going to move on to my year at a glance. This year, I'm going to show you a bit of my process when I'm drawing out the year at a glance. As you can see, this is sped up a lot. And just for the record, it's sped up 60 times. I draw out my layouts just so that I know where everything goes. I am pretty particular on the little details. So I want everything to be perfect. And then I'm going to go in with the pens to fill out the different spaces. This next clip is not sped up 60 times. It's only sped up 20 times, but let's just get on with it, shall we? I'm going to write every single day of the year for my calendar because I do everything by hand. I know it's not the most efficient way of doing things, but there is something about rhyming out numbers over and over again. It's very relaxing, although my hand at the end does start to hurt a little bit. So forewarning if you try to do the same thing. Once I've written all of my numbers, I'm going to write the week numbers on the sides as well. Now, if you are recopying this, make sure to count your weeks right because I made a mistake. And that is why when I get to the end, my year finishes on week 53, which obviously doesn't make sense because it's supposed to be ending on week 52. So I have to get creative and figure out where I went wrong and how to fix the problem because I'm not going to use the whiteout because as you see at the top there with a the little square of whiteout, it doesn't look very good. So I'm going to try a different technique. And my technique is to use a Tombow brush pen and I'm just going to cover the numbers a couple of times. They do end up hiding them, so it's perfect and then I'm going to use a white pen over the top to rewrite the week numbers. Now, if I made a mistake again, that would be very unlucky and I would be very upset. So I made sure to count and focus very intently the second time round. Anyway, this is what it ends up looking like. I think it would have been better without these colors, but because of the mistake I made, I have to deal with it. I'm also going to use this font here and I'm going to write out the initial of all the months of the year and I'm going to choose four different colors. So they're all in the same hues that I'm using for my paintings and I'm just going to alternate them per line. So I start off with a light blue on the top, then I go for another different kind of blue, then I go for a darker green and then at the bottom also a kind of green. Once everything is finished, this is what it looks like with the white pen on that blue strip as well. Now for the fun part. This page is literally just leaves. I have no writing on it and the reason I'm doing this is because it is so relaxing and if you decide to copy, you can leave an entire blank space just to do these same leaves. Now I'm I'm going to show you in a sped up version but this did take me a very long time to do because I was enjoying myself so much and also I wasn't turning the page around just so that I could get this really cool effect but in reality you should turn the page so you make the painting process easier for you and more enjoyable as well. Also I am currently showing you what the painting looks like in real time. Let's continue on so that we move a little bit faster through this because even though it's very relaxing to do it's not necessarily relaxing to watch me paint for eight hours straight. So let's continue. As you can see here, I have a bit more of an example when I'm talking about longer stems because it's more relaxing to paint when the stem is very long. So you don't have to worry about where to put leaves when there's two branching stems. And if you do end up deciding to do this, you'll understand what I mean. Here you can see that there's quite a bit of white space between these two parts. So instead of putting another stem there, I'm actually going to elongate the leaves. And this is one of the difficult things that you will have to deal with when you're doing something this kind of spread but it is still very relaxing and there are so many different ways you can extend your leaves or choose to do them so that you don't have so much white space when you're painting. I did actually make a mistake though because this year again I'm going to be using tabs for the beginning of my bullet journal and by painting the entire page I didn't leave space for those tabs on the left but that's okay we'll get to that when we get to that. My next spread is going to be my future log. Now last year I 
completely forgot that I wanted to do my future log this way, but this year I remembered. I also asked on my Instagram what kind of layer I should do, and you chose to have three calendars per page, smaller boxes, and space on the sides so that I could write any to-dos that I had, and this is what it looks like. Basically, for each day in the calendar, it's two squares across, making the entire calendar 14 squares across. If you want to vote on different aspects of my bullet journal setups, head on over to my Instagram because that's where all the action happens, especially in my Instagram stories where you can vote on things. I'm also going to incorporate my theme in, onto this page. And for this one, I'm going to, of course, add some more leaves. Now the leaves this time are just going to be in the center, flourishing in the middle. And I think it looks so beautiful. Although because this is only page one of two of my future looks, I do actually prefer page two because I've figured out the sort of style that I want to go for. And so the positioning of the leaves is a little bit nicer on page two, but still the process is still really pretty and I really like it. And I hope you enjoy this little time lapse as well. Here is page two. Here's a quick time lapse of me painting everything just so that you can see how I did it or how I thought about it. And I think it looks really cool and very effective. Let's move on. So the next spread I'm going to be doing is my finance tracker. I'm copying my spreads from my bullet journal from 2021 and I'm just going to do exactly the same thing. Furthermore, just about this finance tracker spread, it is heavily inspired by a couple of spreads from other creators. I'm just going to link those ones down in the description below. I have mentioned them before when I did this finance tracker a couple of years years ago, but just so that you remember. Also, as an Archer and Olive ambassador, I have written a blog post about finances in general and savings up on the Archer and Olive blog. If you're interested to read a little bit more about finance tracking, you can check that blog post up. I'm not sure when it'll be out, but I will link it in the description down below when it's out. It has a small Dutch door in the center with some totals on the side, and each page is split into three columns so that I can fit each quarter on one page. I'm going to use the same font that I've been using for the my yearly spreads and it is a very cool font it looks awesome however it is so annoying to illustrate every single time i did get faster at doing it and as you can see i think i'm doing it without putting any pencil markings down first which is in my opinion pretty impressive i'm going to write the months at the top only the first three letters of each month because i don't have the space and then i'm going to write all of the categories that i'm going to be tracking this year this year my categories are slightly different because i'm going to be using my banking app as mostly the way to track my expenses and my income and the things that i'm going to be tracking or the expenses that i'm going to be tracking are as follows i have groceries fuel slash transport fitness and well-being, restaurants and cafes, travel and experiences, Vero Bujo things, clothing and accessories, pen paling, superannuation and miscellaneous things, as well as my income tax. For the income part, I'm going to be looking at my salary, the money I gain from affiliates, from my Etsy store, in my superannuation, interest from the bank and anything else. I also have a totals line, which I'm going to have on the other side of this spread as well, just to see what totals I have per month as well as per category per year because I think it's very interesting to track these things. I'm going to use my ruler now to draw out my boxes and if you're paying attention this ruler is from Muji and in a couple of videos months ago I talked about this being my favorite ruler ever and how I left it in Portugal. Well recently I went to the Muji store in my local shopping center and I found one and I bought it. It is in my opinion the best ruler ever. It's a transparent ruler. It has the grid spacing that you can see and also it has a metal edge on one side so if you're using it to use your like cutting knife, it's perfect. I'm just going to have the columns for each of the categories and then I have the total box at the bottom and then I'm just going to do it six boxes or six squares across for each month and I'm going to do it on both pages as well as the back which you will see in just a moment but I am first going to cut out my Dutch door. Here you can see my ruler in action and I'm just going to use the metal side of the ruler so that I can not damage my ruler when I'm using the blade. I'm going to cut out the Dutch door as so and I'm going to round out the edges of the page just to fit it back into my journal as well. I'm then going to do the same table on the back side of this page 
page and on the next one on the right just to bring everything together and then I'm going to write the days of the month on the top as well and then finally we get to paint which is the most exciting part of every single spread this year because it is so relaxing first of all I'm going to lay down some washi tape also I forgot to mention that the boxes on the right hand side which have the totals they're just the same size as my monthly boxes and it's just going to be where I write all the totals it's pretty self-explanatory and then I'm going to start painting which is very very fun so I'm going to do the top first although I realized that I hadn't even done a title so I decided that I was just going to change things up and put the title on the bottom for a change anyway here is a very quick time lapse of me painting the top because it is so pretty and I love how everything comes together so enjoy Then I'm just going to write the title down the bottom so it's finance tracker and I'm just going to use the same font that I've been using for the beginning of my bullet journal. I am going to use my glue again and I've decided that after this I'm not going to use the glue but anyway here's a quick time lapse of it drying. It is fun to put on and it's fun to kind of take it off. It just takes too long and I think I'm just wasting my time doing it so if you want to do the same thing just draw out the letters and then paint after you've done all of the watercolour. Next, I'm going to remove the washi tape and we love a solid washi tape peel. I was actually trying to use these tweezers to see whether or not it would help. They're from Cricut, but these tweezers are a bit weird because they like cross over in the middle, which means when you push them down, instead of closing they open. So I feel like my brain has been wired a specific way and it doesn't understand that you're not supposed to push down to like close them. And so it just, they don't work for me. Like has anyone had that experience where they use tweezers when you push it down and opens instead of closes? Because it's really frustrating and confusing. Surely I'm not the only one who thinks that. I tried using a white acrylograph to do this, but the acrylograph is a little bit slower than actual paint because you have to go a bit slower just so that the ink flows a little bit better. So I decided that I was going to to go in with my gouache which I'd been doing previously and I'm just gonna paint all of my numbers now anyway once that's done this is the final look and now let's move on to my next page which is going to be my growth tracker and a quote page I was pretty unsure whether or not to include a growth tracker in the front of my journal this year because in 2022 I put it at the end of my journal because I didn't want to focus on numbers but I end up flipping to the end of my journal very frequently anyway so I figured I might as well put it with all of my yearly trackers because then it might actually help me stay on top of my yearly trackers which I don't usually stay on top of all that well so I'm gonna put it at the front and the idea behind this one is it's going to be a graph tracker so I'm going to have the months of the year on the bottom and I'm going to plot on my graph the number of followers that I have and subscribers that I have as I go through the year so the left axis is going to be for Instagram followers and the right axis is going to be for YouTube subscribers of course I'm going to use the same font again and at the very bottom I'm going to put January and December and these are just going to be the number of followers and subscribers I have at the very beginning of the year and also at the very end of the year because I feel like I don't have anywhere in my journals how much I've grown year to year. I'm really interested in analytics. I think it's so fascinating. So yeah, that's more of a nerdy side. Then of course, I'm going in with my decorative pieces. I am not happy with the decorations on the bottom of this page, but you know, I've done them anyway, so it doesn't matter and it's too late now. I can't, I can't really erase them unless I like stick another page over the top of it, but I don't think it's worth it. So I feel like I could have left it blank or I should have done the curve of the branch a little differently. And then of course, I'm also going to do those leaves on the very top of my page as well. And I'm going to first put down some washi tape because I don't want to get the paint all over the bottom and this time I am just going to paint right over the top of the word growth and I will go and paint it over with white paint later on once everything has fully dried. For the leaves on the very top I just want to mention one thing if you are going to try and recreate this make sure you darken the colors in watercolor underneath the letters and make sure you try and cover as much white space as you can just because once you go over it with the white paint you really want the white paint to stand out 
and so you won't really have an idea of what that looks like until after you've put the white gouache on so by making the colors really dark and opaque and then filling up as much white space as possible you're giving yourself the opportunity to make those white letters really pop out at the end finally i'm going to remove the washi tape and i always leave that one little edge on the side because that's where i'm going to be cutting out my little tabs for this year so stay tuned for those tabs later on in the video now next up we have my quote page originally my intention was to fill the entire page up yet again with all of my pretty leaves but about halfway through doing that i decided to change my tune because i decided to leave only half of the page done and then i'm going to write my quote over the top the quote that i'm doing is what if i fall and then the next one is oh but my darling or what if you fly and i thought that was very relatable at the moment because i tend to get scared of doing specific things that i want to do because what if i fail and what if i fall but as the quote says well honey what if you succeed now the big difference with this quote is that because half of the page is left blank I can't use white gouache to do my quote I was thinking maybe I would do white on the watercolor part and then I would do blue on the other part but I've decided I'm just going to do blue for the entire quote I don't know how I feel about it I feel like maybe I regret it just a little bit but it's a nice change and I was really curious to see what the blue would look like over the watercolor so now I know anyway I'm just going to use this blue brush mark from Tombo and I'm going to do the whole quote except for the last line and that one's going to be in a dark green from the Arch and Olive subscription box back in March I believe and again you know the drill use code Avero10 for 10% off. Alrighty just before we get on to the final spread of this video I'm going to go back onto my growth tracker page and just paint the word growth with the white gouache paint. So the last spread that I'm going to be doing today in this video is my goals page. My goals page is a very important page every single year in fact it's so important that I put one every single month and this goals page is a cross between goals and a level 10 life now if you don't know what a level 10 life is you can check out my very first video on YouTube where I do show you what a level 10 life is and how to plan it out I don't speak in that video so if you have any questions let me know but the idea of this one is you rate out of 10 all these different aspects in your life however the level 10 life doesn't really fit my lifestyle so I I arranged it and I picked my own categories and then I'm just going to put them around on my goals page and I'm not really going to rate them out of 10 because I feel like that's not a very productive way for me to go about things and my idea is instead of them being like full-on goals I'm going to make them more like an intention so it's my intention of the year to get things done and it's okay if I can't do them but it would be great if I can I'm trying to put less pressure on myself to get things done really really quickly these days because I feel like I've been quite stressed recently so I just want to be a little bit more lenient with myself instead of being so like tough let's quickly check off the aesthetics part before we get into more details this time the decorations are going to be solely in the center of the page and they're not going to go all the way to the edge of the page they're going to be in the middle and then I'm going to write goals on the very top here's another angle just in case you weren't already sick of me doing the same thing I feel like in this particular clip you can see that I've gotten the hang of doing this design so it's a lot faster now or at least I think it's a lot faster and the details and designs flow a lot more smoothly and they come together a lot faster as well so I really like seeing this angle and I hope you've been enjoying it so far of course the very last step of this particular one is the white gouache I'm just going to go in with a paintbrush to do this I'm just going to get out my font for this month on the side as well and I'm going to start writing the categories now in my plan with me for September I touched on these different categories this time I'm just going to change them up just a little bit to fit into my overarching system of the year and it's going to be in seven different categories in instead of eight because I'm going to combine the categories health and fitness. Now health and fitness for me is about food and physical health. I'm going to separate it from mental health because that's a whole other ball game for me. For mental health one of my biggest goals is to see a therapist. Now I think that everyone should see a therapist but I'm not going to dictate your life obviously. In terms of friends I'm pretty bad at staying in touch with people. I really want to stay in touch with my closest friends who don't actually live around me. I have 
have a lot of friends overseas and I find it really difficult to stay in touch with them because for me, if I don't see someone every single day, then I feel like I don't really talk to them and I'm not going to reach out to them, which is bad because I do actually want to do that. Now, family for me is not really related to my extended family. It's more to do with my mum and dad, who I live with. Next is fun and fun is really just setting a time for myself to do the things that I don't really have time to do anymore. Next is my career. Now, I currently work a casual job, so my biggest goal for 2023 is to find a full-time job. Lastly, I have finances as a goal, which I do have a whole finance tracker for, but more than that, I want to allocate budgets and financial goals for the short term, so for 2023, for the medium term, which would be five years, and then for the long term, which would be 10 plus years. I also want to establish how I'm going to look at retirement and then home loans, etc, etc. So big goals for 2023. I will be talking about goal setting in another video as well, so do stay tuned for that one. It will come soon. And my last step for this journal is to cut out some tabs because I think that they're really handy. Now, I'm just going to use my phone to calculate how many spaces each of the tabs needs, and I'm just going to use a pencil to trace everything out to start off with. Now, I did actually make a mistake because I wanted my last tab to be on my goals page because there is one more spread that I want to do, which is my mood board and my mood pixels. I'm not going to do that one in this video because I want it to be a whole separate video. Here you can also see where I made the mistake in the first place on this little page here. I wasn't supposed to paint on the very back of that tab, but unfortunately it's there, so I'm going to leave it. To start off with, I'm going to use my cutting knife as well as my ruler and a cutting board underneath the page, and I'm going to cut out all of my little tabs. I'm going to have seven tabs because there are seven pages, and once I've cut them out, I'm going to write the little title on each of the tabs. Using the same font I've been using for the entire video, I'm going to write key, year at a glance, future log one and two, finances, growth, and then last one, goals. Anyway, let's get to the very fun part of the video, which is the flip through. This journal has been so much fun to set up. I started setting it up back in September because I wanted to get this video out in time. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. To start off with, we have my cover page. I have my grid spacing cheat sheet and my key page. My year at a glance with this beautiful design on the side. I have my future log for semester one and future log for semester two. Both of them look semi different and I think that's really, really fun. We then have my finance tracker, which is undoubtedly one of the most important spreads of my entire journal. We have my growth tracker as well as the quote for 2023. And lastly, we have my goals for 2023, which I will fill out later on. Anyway, for more inspiration for a bullet journal setup, you can check out my 2022 bullet journal setup where I set up an A4 bullet journal linked right over here.